This video is brought to you by Displate. Halloween, a time of tradition and busting out our favorite spoopy movies. The Nightmare Before Christmas, Hocus Pocus, It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. So many classics to fondly revisit, whether they're genuinely good or downright cheesy. But who cares? We can cut them some slack because it's Halloween. Just be spooky and fun and that'll be enough. And yet, so many movies can't even do that. And there's one in particular that's possibly the greatest offender of them all. The Legend of Halloween. <laughs> Words fail me. With how terrible and bizarre this movie is. Let's go surfing on jelly waves. Let's go hang out with off-brand minions. Let's go trick-or-treat at our furry neighbor's house. You know, the one who wears leather pants and hands out Hawaiian sweet rolls on Halloween. Ah! And y'all aren't even ready for this. The movie was created by the company who makes King's Hawaiian sweet rolls. They're slinging their own products in this movie. Shameless down right shameless who asked for this who thought that this was the best way to promote your stuff so i was actually going to review this trash last year but i had to postpone it due to scheduling issues so that meant i had to watch the film again guys it was like dying twice yeah we got a film that looks awful has a terrible story and is also chock full of corporate meddling and direction. Folks, we might have discovered the worst animated Halloween film of all time. And that is saying something. What's, um, wh wh what's Hawaiian for die? Let's Google this here. Makaloa. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're about to Makaloa, folks. Save me from this movie stitch or preferably the hot Hawaiian lifeguard from Lilo and Stitch. You know the one. So what are the origins behind this cursed movie? Well, like I said, a production company was straight up created for the sake of producing this movie and slinging the bread products of King's Hawaiian. Name of the studio? Oh, you think you're so clever. Fresh Baked Films. Guess how many movies they've made? Yep just the one. Now, I've seen some convoluted reasons for why movies and shows are made. But to sell bread? That's different. It seems to be more trouble than it's actually worth. Like, I truly wonder if they've made their money back on that investment. Because I'll tell you this, these box office returns, no, that's, that's not going to cover the cost of the movie. Now, the movie had a Facebook page that promoted the film, you got these advertisements, and also you got recipes for the movie. Yeah, we're gonna use our sweet Hawaiian bread to, uh, you can eat it while watching the movie. Though I'm not going to lie, that cheese bread one looks pretty good. Also, I like how this one promotion clip says, he's straight, evil. But like, just drop out the evil. It's like, oh no, he's straight. He stomps on a car. So there was another studio that came in to help with the production. And it goes by the name of Arcana Studios. Their filmography is not that great. Ooh, Howard Lovecraft, one and two and three. And oh my God, stop, no more. The director for Halloween was a guy by the name of Sean Patrick O'Reilly, a director from Arcana Studios. Oh, and get this. There were three writers for Halloween. That's a, that's a lot for this movie. And yet, still not enough to save the film, apparently. In September of 2018, The Legend of Halloween was released via DirecTV and also a few movie theaters. And yeah, it did not do too hot. It makes me wonder if this movie would have done better on a streaming service. Though I doubt Netflix would want to have this film on their front page. Check out the Hawaiian sweet rolls. It's like, wait, no, is this movie a bread commercial? Yeah, no, we're not, we're not picking up your film. Go away. Go take your bread somewhere else. 
All right, so what is the legend of Hawaiian about? Well, our story begins in the lands of, you guessed it, Hawaii. Think it's the big island. We are then introduced to three kids, Kai, Eddie, and Leilani. They're surfing in the gelatinous waves and stumble across an underwater chasm. In the chasm, they unleash an ancient Hawaiian curse and release the demon? Yeah, it's Pineapple Head. No, not Pumpkin Head. Get it right, Pineapple Head. Because it's on brand. And the guy just skulks around the island with his angry face, stomping his feet, chasing the kids, and that's all he really does. We then learn from Grandpa about the rich lore behind Pineapple Head and how he is some evil spirit that was banished by the ancient Hawaiians of the island. Oh, and by the way, this was told via handing over drawings from a kid's book. Ooh, fancy. The kids then talk about how they lied to the Grandpa and did not tell him the truth about the box and unleashing Pineapple Head. They did this because they did not want to get in trouble and not be allowed to do Halloween. Priorities, folks. I respect it. Also, check out the kid's bedroom. You got movie posters from previous Arcana Studio films, like Howard Lovecraft and Pixies. Ooh, subtle. We then see Kai's grandpa telling him how important it is to respect the Hawaiian gods. And then Kai just straight up drops an atheism bomb on poor old grandpa. Sorry, grandpa, that stuff isn't real. Like a giant spaghetti monster, or, or wait, a giant pineapple monster. Oh, and by the way, the grandparents are like, oh, looks like the volcano's erupting tonight. All right, kids, go have fun trick-or-treating. Uh, speaking of which, let's go trick-or-treating. And witness one of the most confusing scenes in animated history. Rawr. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Aloha, Aloha. trick-or-treat. Trick Treat. <laughs> you all have a great night. You too, Mr. Griffith. Mahalo. I love these King Hawaiian sweet rolls. They're the best. What? What is this scene? What was that? First off, what is this model? It looks like it's from a different movie. Oh, wait. That's because it is. This character is from an Arcana film called The Steam Engines of Oz. Wow. How resourceful. Next. What's with the dialogue? The exchanges are so awkward, like Elder Scroll NPCs talking to one another. And then of course, the bread. The executives were like, okay, you know what? No, I want y'all to spend half of the money of the budget on the bread. Make it look good. I don't care if the rest of the film looks like crap. Make the bread shiny and delicious. All right, moving on. Pineapple Head just shows up and chases down the kids. Something to do with the moon rock that Eddie has. And then a bunch of minion clones show up to help the kids out. Uh, technically, they're called Minahune, which is an actual Hawaiian legend thing. But my God, does this movie take some liberties with their interpretation of the lore. According to sources, Minahune are some kind of dwarf race according to Hawaiian legend. But here, they are colorful minion hamsters. Ah, yes, let's sell some merch and let's sell some sweet rolls. Money, yay! So the hamster things take the kids to their village where the kids are all like, oh no, we gotta stop Pineapple Head and keep the moon rock away from him. And how do they plan on doing this? By casting it into the volcano. You have only one choice. The ring must be destroyed. So, the kids, with the help of the totally not offensive hamster guys, build a wooden helicopter, get to the volcano, and then walk up it at an 80 degree angle. In flip flops. But oh no. Pineapple Head ambushes the kids at the volcano and gets the moon rock. But don't worry, the kids believe in the power of Jesus Christ and summon a lava lady goddess with her lava boobies. 
I'm not joking. She's got lava boobs. Okay, so for the sake of everyone's sanity, I'm going to speed run the conclusion here. The kids get the help of the lava lady and some guys called the Night Marchers, which is also some Hawaiian lore thingy. So the lava lady, the Night Marchers, the kids, the colorful hamsters, and then sharks all attack Pineapple Head and defeat him in glorious combat. And how do we wrap up the film? Well, with a song, of course. Grandpa swings his Elvis hips and Grandma gets all hot and bothered. Oh, and of course, how can we complete this movie without featuring the two most important parts of this film? Minion Clone and King's Hawaiian Sweet Rolls. As if this movie isn't already shameless enough. I love these King's Hawaiian Sweet Rolls. They're the best. <sighs> so, what are my overall thoughts about this Hawaiian trash? Well, let's start off with, um, I don't know, voice acting? Yeah, let's start with that. I mean, it's the least offensive aspect of the film. Now, the most famous celebrities included are Noah Schnapp, the Will Kid from Stranger Things. And then, of course, you got Mark Hamill. Though he is barely in the film. He's like some cop who doesn't do anything at all. But you better believe they're putting his name on the DVD. Noah sounds like he's phoning it in. And I don't blame him. And everybody else sounds like they just did one take for their lines and that was good enough. Next, there's the story. Yeah, it's uh, it's bad. The writers attempt to pull at your heartstrings with Kai's parents being dead and how Kai is a man of little faith. Or how Eddie is like, I'll never be cool enough to be an astronaut. The girl character is the girl character. And then Pineapple Head has zero interesting things about him and what he's about and what he's trying to accomplish. He's just some monster walking around the island. And that's it. One of the big themes of the film is, oddly enough, faith. Like faith in Hawaiian culture and legends and the gods. That was weird to me. They could have easily played it off where it is about cultural pride and cherishing your history and traditions and ooh, maybe there might be some magic out there. Probably not, but let's have some fun. But no, you got Kai's grandpa who is like a Bible thumping Hawaiian guy and he's like, why don't you believe in the Hawaiian gods, Kai? What are you, an atheist? I don't get it. Now, let me shove our Hawaiian lore down your throat while also simultaneously butchering it. This entire film being based in Hawaii is strictly due to the Hawaiian roles they want to promote. And that's it. So seeing this film pretend to care about Hawaii and its culture comes across as insincere to me. Oh, and might I add, the pacing for this film is awful. And I don't mean just the story. There are scenes where the characters will talk, pause for a few seconds, and then carry on. It's incredibly bizarre, and it feels like the movie is lagging. The three of us have known each other since we could remember. We've been through the good and the bad. We need your help. And then there's the animation. Oh boy. Truth be told, I've noticed moments in the movie where I see touches of competent animators who are working on a tight budget. Damn bread money. Like these characters occasionally have fluid movements and expressions, but I don't care about their designs, especially when you get close to their ugly faces. Their teeth, ugh, yuck. And what's with this hair? It looks like it was painted on, like Woody from Toy Story 2. And these hamster guys, just no. They are blatant minion ripoffs in every single way, and they are not enjoyable whatsoever. The only visual in the entire film that required a full on budget with their top tier attention would be, of course, the Hawaiian bread. The director was like, I don't care if the hamsters look like Sonic versions of fruit stripe bubblegum, just make their bread look good. Cumbersome action scenes or textures on the trees and ground. The water looks like jelly. The backgrounds are empty and lackluster. This entire movie is just a big bowl of nothing soup. 
But hey, at least you can have it with some bread. So, in conclusion, this film is the result of bread. Sweet Hawaiian roll bread. I love that a food company went, hey, you know what we should do? Let's launch a studio that makes subpar animated films that also promotes our bread. Spend our bread to use our bread to make that bread. It's genius. How can it go wrong? <sighs> In so many ways. The story was a drag. The characters were uninteresting. The visuals were very lackluster. And the entire Hawaiian angle feels forced, yet half-baked at the same time. Get it? Get it? Half-baked? Ho-ho! <laughs> and like I said before, there was a moment while watching this movie where I went, Oh yeah, this is a Halloween movie. Where's the Halloween stuff? Which only reinforces how little Halloween has to do with the overall story of this film. Like, you could remove Halloween from the movie and it would have virtually no bearing on the story whatsoever. Guys, do yourself a favor and just go watch Lilo and Stitch instead. It does so much more with its Hawaiian setting and characters than this garbage movie. And if you want to watch something that is Halloween related and good, then go check out Scary Godmother. Like, I did a review for that last year, and it is superior to the legend of Halloween. No joke, Jimmy would have left this pineapple head guy in the dust and would have swiped the candy from these jabroni Hawaiians. Oh, I'm sorry, not the candy, the bread, the bread in their bags, the bread that was given to them from the furry guy. What is this movie? What is happening? So a big shout out to this video sponsor, Displate. Man, this sponsor came at a really good time because I desperately needed some art for my bedroom. These walls of mine have been barren for months now, but Displate came to my rescue. Displate is a one of a kind metal poster designed to capture your unique passions, collecting them and getting inspired. They're sturdy, magnet mounted, and durable enough to withstand a lifetime of intense staring. They also come in a broad variety, with over 1.4 million designs created by artists around the globe. And guys, these collections, you got cartoons, video games, movies, sports, comics, history, nature, manga. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Displayed is stacked with some top tier licensed brands, such as Star Wars, Marvel, and Doom. Plus a ton of designs from independent artists. Just so many to pick from that you can customize, collect, and rearrange. And guys, let me tell you about my favorite feature, the Magnet Mountain. No power tools, no nail damage. All you do is place the magnet strip onto the wall and boom, you're good to go. I was genuinely surprised with how easy it was to set up my displays. And since these things are metal, I can like pull them off the wall and readjust them to get them just right, which is much easier than taking the nails, putting them in, pulling them out, trying again, like none of that's required. As of right now, I got a One Punch Man display. I got a Godzilla one. I got this one of a car in my garage. Got this very appropriate butt one with a raccoon. That's an interesting sentence, but there it is. It's in the bathroom downstairs. And then I got this Family Guy one and also a Twin Peaks display. But I still gotta put those up. Displays are high quality and come in a variety of sizes. They are also printed on demand with each display signed by the master of production. Plus the delivery is very fast, so you'll get your orders quickly, like four to five business days. On top of that, and this was a pleasant surprise, but Display plants a tree for every display that is sold. Look at my profile. Look at it. Look at these badass collections. This one artist called Design Turnpike has a bunch of displays of vintage world maps, and I really want to get my hands on them. Gonna set me up a study room in my house with map art surrounding my books and whiskey decanter. Gonna get all fancy up in here. So go hit up Displate and use my link in the description. If you get one or two of them, you get 26% off your order. If you get three or more, you get 36% off. So go check out Displate today. <laughs>